When natural disasters strike, such as earthquakes and tsunamis, they challenge the structural integrity of buildings, homes, and bridges. Keeping communities safer during these events requires structures that can withstand high impacts. Tensegrity is a design principle that incorporates two concepts, tension and integrity, to construct cheaper, lighter, and simpler structures. Take this structure for example. The cores are stretched in a state of tension. They connect the rods, which are in a state of compression, creating integrity in the structure. Tensegrity is found in art, nature, and even in our bodies. Tendons and muscles stretched across bones create a tension and compression system that helps us move. Contemporary sculptor Kenneth Snelson used the term floating compression to describe the effect that these opposing forces create. That's the illusion created here in the Kuropa Bridge, which opened across the Brisbane River in Queensland, Australia in 2009. Tensegrity-based designs often incorporate membrane structures. Thin flexible material is stretched across a system of supports, creating a lightweight, durable structure. Take a tent for example. The tarp is the membrane, and it stretches over a system of poles. The same principle is used in shoji. The structure of the interwoven bamboo frame provides compression, and the translucent paper serves as a thin, tension-holding membrane. The function of these simple structures is to protect you from a gust of wind or light rain. But how could tensegrity be scaled to protect masses of people from natural disasters? Tensegrity structures aren't confined to straight lines and right angles. Architects can combine complex geometric shapes with efficient use of material and weight distribution. Storage, portability, and assembly are easier when the components are lightweight and the parts are tunable, allowing for adjustment and easy repairs. How do you think Tensegrity could be used to improve building design or to provide assistance in a disaster? <laughs>